Life always finds a way. As the old wither down in the bleat, something new always emerges. As a fungal moss decimates the current thriving population of plants, these new giants of the deep are on the precipice to take over. recent addition to the oceans of Caligari, these plants had discovered a new niche, deeper than most creatures can survive. In these depths, the Vade had no real competition, and so could grow into the tremendous sizes that covered the deep parts of the ocean. Their roots grow long and sturdy, and in doing so, quickly made their way out of the deep, creeping closer and closer to the surface. They couldn't do this alone, however. The fungal moss that other plants were eradicated by quickly found its new targets and spread like wildfire. The only saving grace was the tremendous size of these ocean dwellers and a surprising new companion who found this moss to be surprisingly delicious. With the use of its new adaptation, Bioluminescence, these fades created a new and unique way to attract nearby creatures to this abundance of tasty moss. And, as we will continuously find in this episode, sometimes help can go a long way. The food chain has widened, and specialization is in full effect. The simple body plants of earlier inhabitants, like the Q, has no chance of survival in this world. The ones that didn't manage to adapt and evolve were easy meals for these new and improved forms of life, fully dying out within a short time frame. Carba, however, are one of the most diverse and spread out species in these waters. Their numbers were greatly increasing, just as the evolutionary race was starting off. As creatures were battling it out, these Carba had enough numbers to test out multiple ways of evading these new and terrifying beasts. Like the pods. As we continuously see in life forms on Earth like the lobsters, snails, and turtles, sometimes a shell is all you need to successfully not perish. As most of its Carba family either elongated, segmented, or died, this clade of bottom feeders put all their points into two distinctive traits, a thick shell on its back and a strong backflipper. Its backflipper is thereby often used to dig itself deep under the soft ocean floors, forming a little sand hill with only its adorable long antennae sticking out. While this creature has purely adapted for protection, other Carba descendants decided to turn his strategy towards the offensive. As Carba elongated, this clade, the Beskal, found tremendous success in the hunt, appearing in these oceans after around 200 million years. It uses its four bulky legs to sort of skip over the ocean floor, propelling itself forward with two small flippers on the back of its body. As this creature spreads its legs, the two sharp spikes on top form into small fins, aiding in torsion through the water. Though its sharp beak can break down the thick shelves of the pods, its diet mainly consists of small critters and the moss too high for pods to reach. The pods and Beskal have made the Vade their home. These two forms of life aren't the most adaptive to the ocean. Hell, they aren't the fastest or the strongest, but the thick canopy of roots create relative safety for the pods, and the enclaves on top of the vade create a place where Beskal can relatively safely lay eggs. This form of cooperation seems to be deeply ingrained in most of the creatures of Caligari. But let's not dwell on the deep for much longer, and look more closely towards the surface.
As we move further towards the surface, we spot a very peculiar situation. Two life forms, both living fossils of time long past. We see a larva withering through the plants and coral. We found the same larva 16 million years prior? This ocean is filled with such complex and evolved life. How is this creature still alive? Its movement is impeded by the still semi-fused armor plating of its body. To find the answer to its survival, we must look at the other ancient relic of a previously thriving existence. As the dittery plant family reaches near extinction, this plant seems to be one of the only ones left. But via a seemingly horrible mutation, it still managed to survive into present day. Its trunk doesn't grow towards the surface, but has mutated to grow along the bottom of the ocean. This is... Uh, wait. This larva knows two things. That there is danger nearby, and that... She is pregnant. She can't lose her babies to whatever is scanning these waters for a possible meal. She knows what to do, and quickly makes her way, yes, into the tight corridors of this fallen down plant. As this larva mother makes its way into the narrow and winding tunnels of this plant, its tight corridors are filled to the brim with tusk. These small creatures clamp onto whatever rubs their sensitive and strong tentacles, digging themselves deep into the ridges of this creature's armor plating. It turns out that a seemingly weak body plan was the ideal step for its survival. She finally reaches the inside of this tuple plant. Here, she can safely give birth, far away from any potential danger, and as she squeezes back out of the plant, she is covered in the butts of the tuple plant, ready to further both species. The shadow of a more evolved form of Carba, the Razor Carba, re-emerges, but in closer inspection, swims away. Its father learned the hard way that the tusks on top of the larva mother managed to stay undigested via one new adaptation. Its insides are covered with a potent poison that, if digested, will result in a quick death. These two species, though seemingly primal, will be the biggest keys in the future of this planet. They will be the pioneers of life on land. for watching this episode where I go into more depth about the Carba family. After a very kind comment from an already super supportive person for this series, I have made a family tree of the Carba and will, from now on, end the video with a tree that shows all the animals that have evolved so far and that shows the different animals that are new to the chart during said video. Thank you all so much for the support I've received. I did not imagine the amount of people that would be into this show and I started this series only thinking my mom would watch it and she did by the way, she loved it. In the next episode we will explore the tragic story of the Q and how they managed to still evolve and thrive, but maybe not as you expect. Thank you for watching and see you all in the next episode.